I tell you what, this is our first of three photo stops. This gives you a big bird's eye view looking over Cape Canaveral on the right and Kennedy Space Center on the left. We'll stay here just long enough for your photos. We'll answer any questions you might have. Then we'll get back aboard the heated bus and we'll take you up to the shuttle launch pads. But I need to ask you one favor. Please stay on the grandstands. Please stay on the concrete. Whatever you do, do not go up to the river. Why? You all passed the test. Now protect your brother from the gator. to a two-hour dissertation where I can show you the best video on the bus that only lasts two minutes. So look at that monitor right above your head. This shows you how they do those solid rocket boosters. It's now 98% complete. So what's inside the big room? A couple of Italian logistics carriers. I call them Gucci bags. That's how they bring supplies up to the space station. That's what's going up on our next shuttle mission, now scheduled for April the 5th. They drop you off in this smaller TAM building. Inside your full-scale mock up to the space station, you've got to go across the footbridge to get to the viewer's gallery. Check it out. To the right, looks like a junkyard is immediate. It's not. Uh, some parts look like a launch pad. This is where they test out the fueling systems for that big orange tank. It holds all that super cold liquid fuel, hydrogen and oxygen. So if it's going to go crack or boom, we want it to happen here at the test facility, like it did about nine months ago. Now, you saw on the video the parachutes being reeled in. We don't throw them away. We reuse them. So if you look to the front left of the bus, they're getting ready to unreel one of those parachutes used from the last shuttle launch last week. So this is our parachute refurbishment facility. They're going to hang that one-ton parachute onto that yellow monorail system where they're in turn going to run it through a washing machine. How big is your washing machine back home? That one is 25,000 gallons. And that's how they get the salt out of the salt water. So there you go. There's one of the parachutes. And that was just for you all, nobody else. <laughs> we stage this out every day. You bet. Just like the alligators out here. The silver pipes running parallel with us. I wish I could tell you they carry something exotic like rocket fuel. Nope. All they carry is hot water. And that's where they use to heat the buildings when we have winter here. I used to say two or three days a month. I mean two or three days a year. I'm sorry. Now it's two or three weeks in a row. Uh, it is like a small city out here. Remember this was built back in the early to mid-1960s. There wasn't much on Merritt Island. So literally you have your own small city out here. There's a gator way, way off to your left on the bank.
Police department, fire department, gas stations, power plants, sewage treatment facilities. We even have a child care center. But the only people who sleep here at night are the firemen on duty and the astronauts getting ready for flight. For those who recall the Apollo 13 movie, you might recall one of those astronauts got pulled off the moon mission two days prior to launch. They say he was exposed to the measles. If that happened today for a shuttle mission, they would just delay the shuttle launch. Why? There's no more backup astronauts. So that's why the astronauts today go into quarantine one week prior to launch to minimize their exposure to any possible sicknesses. They can say goodbye to their families after they go through a medical screening, but it does not include children under the age of eight. They are the germ carriers. I'm sorry to say. If you look down the alleyway, you see a covered walkway. Directly underneath the right-hand side, directly underneath the right-hand side, you might make out some silver handrails. And that's where you see those famous pictures of the astronauts walking out the day of the launch, or the night of the launch, wearing those orange suits, waving to all the photographers, then boarding that van for that 20-minute ride out to launch bay. So that's where the wow. journey starts, right there. So we're going to take the exact same route, almost, that those astronauts took last week. So what would you be thinking about for your first space shuttle launch? I'll keep the microphone, ma'am. I wish I didn't have that last cup of coffee. We've heard it all on this bus. It is a family tour. I will pass around a picture of the astronauts who were launched last week. Uh, six people, five men, one woman. On the back side is a biography. You might want to look at it real quickly, see if there's a hometown near yours. For those who remember how big the computers were back in the 60s, they took up the whole first floor. If you have a BlackBerry in your back pocket or your purse, your BlackBerry has more computing capacity than that whole building had back in the 60s. What's the space program done for you lately? On your right, the big satellite antenna dish. It's part of our main communication center. It also applies to the second most asked question out here. Why in the world? That's, that antenna allows the Kennedy Space Center to stay in constant contact with Mission Control in Houston. So the most asked, one of the most asked questions is, why launch the astronauts from here, but control the missions from Houston, Texas? And the simple one-word answer for that is, very good. Who said that? Why aren't you sitting up front? <laughs> Okay, so here's your double jeopardy question, sir. Don't get it wrong. He said politics. What's the simple three-word answer? I don't know. <laughs> I'll use that one tomorrow, sir. But, uh, but the simple three-word answer would be Linda Baines Johnson. For those who don't know, he was the vice president of Mr. Kennedy from Texas. In 1961, December, after President Kennedy committed us to go to the moon, there were three cities under consideration for mission control. The three cities were Houston, Texas, Tampa, Florida, Boston, Massachusetts. Tampa was quickly eliminated between Houston and Boston. Why Boston? Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. Very good. But there were more influential congressmen from Texas who controlled the money. But if you think about it, kind of, Apollo 13, Boston, we have a problem. It just wouldn't sound very good. According to my brother who lives near Boston, Boston always has a problem. So that's what he says, not me. So don't take it out of me. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat quick. Fat quick.